Hello and welcome to another edition of The Center Ring, a.k.a. TCR, a.k.a. your favorite esports podcast. This episode is going to sound a little different, if you haven't already noticed, uh, because the recent Windows update, at least that's what I'm going to blame, decided to fry my uh, my soundboard's USB drive. Something happened, Brett. It's it's an inside job. I don't know. That's what I'm going with. I don't know whose fault it is. I don't know who to blame. But uh, all of a sudden, it worked a couple days ago, and now it doesn't. And Technology. The, the only thing that changed in between was a Windows update. So I'm going to blame that. But that won't stop us from doing the show, Brett, because there are people depending on us to right. produce We're, we the, gotta do our the best esports content ever. This is The Centering, a.k.a. TCR, a.k.a. your favorite esports podcast, episode 118, coming to you live, pre-recorded from an undisclosed location. The date is August 15th, 2018, the time, 8.57 p.m. Central Standard Time. In typical TCR fashion, we are running late. So if you are the few that actually watch us on Twitch live, you're probably used to it by now and uh we'll get through it again i brett was he could see me on webcam i really did try everything and the only thing i could think of it's the usb cord that just my mixer is not wanting to cooperate i'm, I'm not going to blame my mixer i'm going to blame windows i think it's the windows, windows 10 update. Yeah. oh yeah yeah we're gonna go with that but uh anuj is not here it's been like three weeks so he had to go on vacation and uh, that's okay, though, because Brett and I are still here. That man is so independently wealthy. He's just got all the money. It's that double income, no kids life, man. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm telling you. It's yeah. a nice thing. It's a nice yeah, thing. Yeah, it is. Um, Man, this is weird without music. I don't know. Like, I normally go off sound cues on when like I should start inter- introducing I, the I topics. I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is, though... It's going to be the most rough episode ever, but it's also going to be the best episode ever because we have e-news, as always, at the end of the show as we wrap up our uh, needs to know but not enough time to talk about news. Thorin said something stupid, which got people talking, and oddly enough, I did not think we were going to be talking about Thorin today, but here we are. So we'll talk about Thorin and maybe the best way to handle yourself if you're going to be viewed as a figurehead in esports. But to start the show off, Brett, well, first off, let me pimp out. The, see, this is what happens with no music. I forget to pimp out all of our stuff. Follow us on Twitter at the Center Ring. Uh, if this is your first episode, I apologize. I promise. There's a lot more production value that goes in on, in on the, the episode, but uh, not this one. Not this one. <laughs> So it's, it sounds just as weird for me as it does you. But let's get into some Overwatch League World Cup action because I feel like it kind of snuck up on us. Maybe it's just because with the the league ending, uh, I just, yeah, I, I mean, I've been it, out it, of the loop. I've been playing a lot of WoW. <laughs> so maybe yeah, it's just, I mean, that I, came out. Yeah, so maybe it's just, I haven't been paying attention, but I do feel like this is snuck up. You're keeping it in the Blizzard family. That's true. I don't get, I don't oh, venture yeah. far out of Blizzard. That is very so, true. Nowadays, my life revolves around them. Yeah, but it's kind of weird timing, right? Like, we're not far removed from a very long season um, with a, you know, an awesome and I, playoff and, and a, big, a big event. And it's like, here we go. Here's it's a, a, weird know, a couple too. of weeks later is a World I Cup. don't know if it's like a scheduling issue. Maybe it's on Blizzard's, you know, maybe it falls onto Blizzard for this one. But, mm-hmm. you know, the officially there is still an all-star game happening for the league so like the 2018 overwatch league season really hasn't concluded yet like there is still business to be had for the 2018 year for the overwatch league and you're doing a world cup in between and i get it because look there's a lot of teams in the world cup this year they're doing four stages and it's supposed to you know all lead up to blizzcon and that's how yeah. they do it, right? So BlizzCon's what in November, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, and just just to build off your, you know, the the All Star Weekend, that's 
uh, the 25th through the 26th of August this month. So yeah, it's like right in the middle of it. Yeah. Right in the middle so of there's, everything. There's really not a whole... I don't know. It just seems weird. It seems weird. But and and, and some of the players are playing this week, so it's like yeah, that's a busy of schedule. Lots yeah. of traveling, and even for uh, our buddy Alchemist, who friend of the show, and is like the head observer. He's the lead observer for the Overwatch League. Stand, he was stand up, I, gentlemen. I was talking to him the other day about his schedule. I was like, bro, when are we gonna play? Like we haven't played together in months. Like we gotta play WoW. We gotta play Overwatch. Lucio Ball's happening. We gotta get going. And he's like, yeah, I gotta go to Korea, and then I gotta go to, like London, and then I gotta go back to California. And he is all over the place. So and imagine doing that, but then being a player like that actually. Uh, not to say Alchemist's job doesn't whoa, matter. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> it matters. It's this? it's just you know it's a little different. It's a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there is, uh, in this group coming up, uh, which actually starts tomorrow, so by the time anyone's listening to this, um, you know, it might have already started, which is fine. Yeah, uh, we're not, because I'm not going to talk about, yeah, and I'm not going to talk and about, this... like, very time-sensitive matters here, but for group Incheon, is that how we're, we're saying that? that? Is that how You're going to follow word? that, I'll... that Man. butchering of the name sword. I'm not, a. I'm not one to go to for saying words, man. Yeah. But it does start. So if you're in America, it starts tomorrow at 8 p.m. Pacific time. That is 10 o'clock Central, 11 Eastern at night. So it's kind of. I mean, normally for Korea, you we get we get hit with the super early morning times. Uh huh. So it is kind of nice that this time around, yeah, nine. That's nine o'clock for no, 10 o'clock for us. What time does it start? Eight o'clock so Pacific time. So Pacific. for Central, so for us in the Central 10. time zone, that's that's getting ready for bed. That's cozying up. I'm, I'm, I'm I'll I'm, watch one. I'm not gonna watch. I will I will power through. I will Majority power through and finish it. Like I I will watch it all. I promise. I will make that promise to the listener. So this is in Korea. It's right outside of Seoul. This is being put played on patch 1.26 for those who don't know that is the wrecking ball release patch so we will see wrecking ball we will see hammond being played at the world cup which to me is pretty huge and i think that can make a lot of difference which we'll get to uh when we get into the teams Uh the map pool all maps it's wide open it's go time now get this hear hear me out here brett and tell me what you think Uh of this yeah each match will begin on a predetermined control map. Nepal, uh, Lijing Tower, Ilios, or Oasis, right? Okay. So that's not that's yeah. not out of the norm. You know, you play on a control right. map and, and be done with it. And that's the first one is always predetermined. Starting uh-huh. with the second map, the loser of the previous map gets to pick the next map from the following game types. Second map is going to be hybrid. Third map will be assault. Fourth map will be Escort. If we got to go to a fifth map, which is the tiebreaker, it will be Control, and it must be played on a different map that was than what was played in the first map, in the first game. So they're not just playing four games, round robin, like against each other, because... No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's right, multiple maps on this. Right. It's a best okay. of... I mean, it's a best of five, right? Just like, okay. uh, just like the League, right? So I I personally though I love that I wish you would see that happen in the league where it wasn't a completely predetermined map set throughout the whole season I love the uh-huh. idea that the losing team gets to pick the map because a I think that actually it's like bringing in the veto strategy with Counter Strike or any other MOBA right where you veto heroes out and champions on what people can select yeah. so I I love that idea anytime where you can add another layer of strategy a that gives us people who talk about the games one more thing to talk about and dissect but it also adds another layer of okay like these these teams have a chance to turn it around or or pick a stronger or a weaker map compared to their their favorite or their opponent see and i i like it's a good start right like it was a good it's good it's a good start from what we had before which was it, it was predetermined. We we knew what map was going to be played, and and that's that. 
I would like him to even take it a step further and just do a a legit veto, like like a pre like before so have the match even maps, begins, like you know veto it exactly. Out. Exactly. Like you, you know, control hybrid assault and escort are going to be played can, you know, consecutively Yep. before, before each map, or maybe even do it before the game starts. Like, okay, we're going to do our map pick for control. We're going to do our map pick or our veto system for hybrid assault escort and already have them like done that way. Um, I, but I guess their worry is that it's not, you know, maybe we're not going to see as many maps. Right. right. I mean, look at look at what happens to Counter Strike. You know, you Cobble. never see. Like, all we saw for the longest time was Cobble, right? Like yeah. that's all that was played, or or Dust Two, or what have you. So it's, it goes I get in it, waves. but I get it. But at the same time, there are ways to even improve on this system. But it's a good start. Yeah, and I, I like that they're doing the World Cup to try to hopefully test this out for for season two yeah um because who knows what's going to happen there uh and you know i don't we don't need to talk about it right now because it's just the world cup and maybe right. we'll maybe we'll wait for a future episode if we are light on topics or whatever but there are a lot of things happening for season two with teams getting announced you know uh rumors that toronto is going to get a team australia is going to get a team that uh, that one kind of throws me for a loop like time zone wise right yeah no like, that's it's going to be rough, be rough but that's something we could talk about um, later on because yeah. just what we can expect for season two um i heard yeah. a an interview with oh it was um boom esports the business of esports it's another podcast uh and uh our buddy shay was on it and he was asked the question like what what do you want to see for season two for these franchises coming in and everything and kind of made me want to talk about that so we'll talk about that in a future episode though i don't want to get bogged down with season two overwatch because that can fill an episode up on its own uh looking at these teams for the world cup i'm just going to go down the order that the overwatch league website has them in uh starting with new york xl Uh, i'm sorry south korea silly me my bad (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah hey i didn't hey, mean to I make mean, that mistake it... <laughs> i mean there's some variety there there's some variety <laughs> a little bit yeah maybe not in the starting lineup but hey there's there's variety so new york uh ooh, that was actually a mistake in south korea, for south korea you have mecco from new york uh-huh. jonak mvp of the league from new york you have arc from new york libero from new york and I can never say that guy's this guy's name. Just say the name for me. You know who? Kareem? No, 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 no. The guy, yeah, the guy. Sabalobi. Say, say below, say below B? Say below B. You just have to say it fast. Dude, it's a yeah. You really do. <laughs> like if you think about it, it. You know what makes it worse is I can say it fine in conversation, but if you're yeah, right. reading it, you're like, say, Saiba. It's just awful. So just don't try to read it, and you're you're fine. Uh, yeah. so what's that? One, two, three, four. That's five New York XL guys. Now the non-New York people they got though, Carpe and Fate. Carpe being from Philadelphia and Fate being from LA Valiant. Mm-hmm. I know it's very cliche to say that there's no way South Korea is going to lose, but there is no way South Korea is going to lose. No, I mean they could field their second. I mean, if you want to call them second string and they would still destroy anybody else in this group. And there, there are a few good teams. There's one good team. And then there's another team that has some overwatch league pros in, in this group, in Russia, in this group. Yeah. In this group, in this group. So yeah, if they don't make it, that would be like a hundred times worse than New York losing the final. I mean, I like, they're, they're, I think they're definitely going to get out of groups, oh, but yeah. I'm saying like yeah. they're going to be finals, right? They, there's no oh if they don't make if they don't make the hell, dude. If they don't win the World Cup, it's going to be a disappointment. But if they don't make the yeah. finals, then it's you're going to even look. I'll I'll tell you what too. What's funny with this, right? Is Fate and Carpe are kind of going into this uh, with less pressure on them because I mean Carpe played in the finals and. You know, LA, they were 
what top four? Yeah, they made the four. playoffs. Yeah. New York though, and no one looked at them as blowing it. New York blew it in the the playoffs for the league. So if Carpe and Fate, you know, if they lose the World Cup, it's like, hey, whatever, right? Season hangover, we'll move on. But if everybody else on that team blows this World Cup, it's going to be like, so what's happening, guys? Like, is it the and- stage? Is it the prep work? Is it the new? Because, again, this is another big meta change, right? Yeah. Is it? Because that's what everyone was saying for the the finals is that they weren't prepared. Oh, yeah, they weren't prepared, and it was their own fault yeah. because they didn't want to be prepared, right? It was just the way they prepped for it. But I I think for that reason, Tim, I think they're going to be prepared here because, I mean, it, it's known that the the Korean teams adapt to metas quicker, and the finals was kind of an anomaly, right? Um, yeah, and, and that defeat that they uh, you know uh, went up against, but. I think they're going to succeed in this World Cup because of that reason. There's no way they don't go into this unprepared. You know? Yeah. There, there's no way. And this is they're not going home to. for them. Because you got the pressure. You got the pressure. That, I mean, even the New York players have pressure, um, you know, behind them. Like, uh, if Libero is going to, there's no way that I don't, I don't, Libero is going to start. But uh, Sebalobi, he's got Carpe breathing down his neck. He's got Fleta bringing, uh, breathing down his neck in this World Cup. Um, you know, Kareev, awesome diva. You know, he's going to be breathing down Fury's uh, Fury's neck. I mean, Fury played for London, but there there is enough talent on this World Cup roster for them not to be complacent and just be like, hey, my role is here. I'm going to play, you know. That's not the case. Yeah. So there's competition is what I'm trying to get at. Within the, yeah, within the roster. Within the team, there. yeah, yeah. Now, this is going to be my point up, though, from them using the changing it to the wrecking ball patch. So when you're moving on to teams like Russia, where they have two two league players and that's it. Um, yeah. They have mistakes and Shadowburn. Now, Shadowburn, yeah. never, you never even saw him in the playoffs, which I mean, eh, you know, some yeah, people can he, say he, he saw his played. playing time definitely decreased, uh, you know, with uh, EQO coming to the squad and kind of taking his his DPS role. So, you know, he's going into it, not really playing a whole lot. Mistakes, you know, he was part of that 10, 10 and 0, stage three. Uh, you know, he's a big part of, of Boston making the playoffs and, uh, you know, playing as well as they did. So they got that going for him. But yeah, you look at that roster and it's like, yeah, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't see how they how they get out of this group. So this is, this is where my glass half full attitude comes into play. So the majority of their roster and hear me out are, are are one of the better teams in the EU contenders. They come from CIS hope, which is now wind strike. It's a, Mm -hmm. they just kind of bought out um, recently, but for the sake of the conversation, they're a top four uh, contenders team. For the European side of it, contenders have been playing on the wrecking ball patch already. Okay. In a competitive setting where wins mm-hmm. matter, they've been working on it a lot longer and been taking it a lot more serious than these other guys have been. So I'm not yeah, going I'm... to I'm not going to underestimate the teams full of contender players because they're they're a more comfortable territory than I would say South South Korea is. Yeah, and, and, you know, that could have been a big part of, you know, just kind of building off that they've already played on this patch um, idea. I mean, that might have been a big part of what happened to New York in the playoffs, right? They mm-hmm. The Brigetta meta uh, came, uh, uh, you know, started in the playoffs. And, you know, there were teams that played that meta prior to them that already had some experience on it. And, uh, you know, maybe that played a factor, right? So I can see that mindset, but I just look at that Finland team and there's just too much talent okay. on that roster. Did you know there were so many Finns in the league? Right? Yeah. I you did know, not. I, if you would have told me that there are enough Finnish players to fill uh-huh. up an entire roster, I I wouldn't have been able to guess who. I didn't, yeah, I didn't I know mean, half of these guys were. You know, 
I I pride myself. I, I watch a lot of a lot of Overwatch, a lot of Overwatch League, and you know I'm a big Shaz guy. I did not know Shaz was from Finland. Like, no idea. I had no idea. I thought Fraggy yeah. was Swedish. I thought, yeah. It's all Who in that knew? same, you know. It's area. all the same over there, right? Uh, <laughs> but no, Finland's roster. Yeah. You got Fraggy from Philadelphia. You have Shaz, yeah. as you mentioned, from L.A. Zap is from Florida. Big Goose from L.A. Gladiators. Linkser Great from mercy, Houston. Good Lucio in this. You know, Linkser can be shaky on a DPS, in my opinion. I don't think he plays nearly as well as some of the other top people that he tries to compete with, especially when you have Taimu right next to him. Uh, I think yeah. Taimu is going to be playing more of the uh, hit scan DPS. You're going to see Taimu on Widow. Because, you know, on Houston there, Linkser tried playing Widow at times. And I felt uh-huh. majority of it, he were mm-hmm. he would lose the Widow fights. So I think you're going to see Taimu more on, on the hit scan DPS there. Um, but these It's guys, interesting to see. Go 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 ahead. Oh, go. well, I was gonna say just just on the you know the topic of widow, it's I'm interested interested to see with this with this new patch if widow is gonna be played as much with Hammond. You think? Mm, because yeah, he's, you know, Hammond is so mobile question. and so good at diving. He can get to widow, and you're not gonna headshot him, right? Yeah. While he's spinning so. around. I mean, that's going to be an insane headshot. Now, the thing that Finland has going for him is that all these guys have played together, right? Like, before yeah. Overwatch League, like, season zero of the Contender League, you know, before, like, Overwatch League started, right? And you actually mm-hmm. had, like, regular old teams. The majority of these guys did play together. So they're not coming in completely cold here. They know they have each other's play styles and familiar with each other um i would say finland's a second favorite in this group oh yeah for sure i mean there there is something to be said about you know the uh the other teams playing you know the contender team contender teams playing on you know the current patch but yeah i'm with you tim i i just look at this finnish roster and it's just there's too much talent at the tank and dps i mean even support uh to just say yeah, there's a chance mm-hmm. that they that they don't make it. Um, uh, other other teams... I, I feel like yeah, I feel like the two teams in this group are going to be Korea and Finland, and it would be a huge disappointment if uh, neither of those teams made it. Now, if or... you recall from last year's World Cup, you did have Japan kind of be a crowd favorite when they were sneaking their way through. Japan is in this group. That's all I got. Yeah, that's all I, I got. L- yeah, look, I mean, I don't uh, know. Lot of... <laughs> I'll watch I... European contenders. I can't watch Japan Overwatch too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's you know. I'll I'm, read you. I'm I'll read you the expert the the paragraph from the the website. This Japanese squad compri- compri- uh, comprised entirely of Cyclops players came through the path to pro program after finishing first in Season 2 of Pacific's Open Division. That placed them in third in trials to be promoted into contenders, where they have been killing it. So, there you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Again, last sure. year last year they had a crazy run. They're going to have to have a crazy run this year. Yeah, because six teams are in, two are making it out. One's already decided they really only have one other spot, and they're going to have to take it from Finland. Like, good luck. Have fun. Yeah, Yeah, right. That's really what you're doing is you're playing for second place, which is every time South Korea, you know, every time the World Cup comes around, it's just (laughs) who's ever in a group with South Korea, you're just playing for second place. Well, at least Um, it's not the U.S. (laughs) We also have Chinese Taipei in this group. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. those guys are going to play their hearts out. I'm and, uh, sure they're upstanding gentlemen. It is and good it, gamers. You know, it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see. Keep an eye out for Chinese Taipei. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. Just just go on a limb and say they're going to make it, then you just that instantly make all like all I'm saying. Top keep post. an eye out. I mean, 1010 <laughs> their tank and blew Stop their him. DPS. They've been playing <laughs> hard. 
They've been playing hard. Uh-huh. Dude, yeah. <laughs> all, Insert all the generic hard. sports talk <laughs> now. <laughs> And um, I believe in the pre-show, Brett, you were telling me this is your favorite team and you're going to take the show wall-to-wall coverage with Hong Kong is also in this. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, Yeah, so they're going in with, what, four or less players. That's interesting. That's all I got, Tim. That's all all I got. Sorry. So, obviously, the uh, Asian demographic teams we are not that familiar with. I would say that's okay. I would be surprised if anyone was familiar with them. I mean, I blame them. They need to get good, right? Like, well, get or good American. And we'll, we'll know who you one are. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever one's easiest. Become an American right. and play over here so I can watch you. Yeah. Or get good to where I want to watch your games. But uh, <laughs> there's only so much time in the day, and I cannot spend that watching Chinese Overwatch Contender League. So, but I will watch them at the World Cup, which starts tomorrow. And uh, I think for this group, give me South Korea and Finland. But like I said, I could see Russia getting by. Taking some maps. Yeah, I could okay. see Russia taking some maps and getting over Finland. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I don't see South Korea losing a map. No, I don't honest. either. Uh, I but feel I like, can... given the majority of these teams, they could probably coast their way through. And like, yeah. I know in, in uh, for the Japanese little team information here, it was like, oh, and they uh, are undefeated in a league with Korean teams, like five all Korean teams. Like, yeah, in yeah, contenders. but it's not those. Yeah, Koreans. <laughs> like, are you comparing it's... five Korean teams and contenders to the MVP of the league and? pretty much five out of the six rosters for the number one team in the league throughout the season. If you're, if you want to look at it that way, I mean, if you look at the overwatch league, the overwatch league could probably field like five Korean teams just in that league. Right. Yeah. So (laughs) it's like, okay, there's the best five teams. And then you got the other five teams that are in Korea. It's like, okay. All right. right. (laughs) Sure. So we'll see what happens yeah. there. But uh, uh-huh. that is starting tomorrow uh, at nighttime in America. So let us know who you, how you think is going to go. And we'll we'll do this because with the World Cup, the way they have it panned out, it's conveniently throughout the um, throughout the World Cup and leading up to BlizzCon. It's one group at a time. So rather than doing one giant World Cup preview, we're just going to go one group at a time as they're about to start because that's the easiest way. We were going to mm-hmm. talk about this episode also, but we don't have time with our next topic. We were going to talk about Olympics and esports and, you know, World Cup themed oriented stuff. Uh, we'll save that for another time as well because I feel like that might be one that Anuj wants to get onto. Um, I know he he's had his opinions on the the olympics and esports so we'll wait for him to be on here so we can also talk about that as a full-on show maybe with actual background music so it doesn't sound ridiculous uh, <laughs> but you know we roll with the punches the show must go mm-hmm. on right. let's get on to our next topic though because i do want to i do want to bring this up this episode earlier yesterday thorin Duncan Shields, uh, CSGO historian, very big in the CSGO scene, and in general, I would say Overwatch. Um, If you've been following esports for a long time, he's had his hands in a lot of different baskets, mainly Counter-Strike, but he also does um, Overcast with Monty for Overwatch and stuff. I mean, he's involved. He's involved in a lot of places. I mean, he know he he's a general in general esports historian like he even knows mobas like i mean it's yeah. is his knowledge is vast yes. i mean we don't we don't doubt that like no the man knows esports yes so no one could take that away from him but throughout all this he's also had times where he will say some ridiculous things and when i say ridiculous i don't mean like you know china's gonna win the overwatch league next season you know or yeah. shanghai is gonna win next season uh, it's not like that. It's like racist, offensive, 
slurs and it's just it's it's out of character for what you would assume someone would be like he is a figurehead right for better or for worse whether or not he accepts that title i think he is a figurehead in esports so when he goes on social media and says these ridiculous things um you know from outsiders looking in and i i bring this up every time we bring this up right i'm a huge harper on outside looking in right big yeah. money looking at esports those people who are hesitant to get into esports and thinking yeah i don't know it's it's kind of video games it's kids my kids play it I, I i'm just not sure if it's the right thing for our product they see this and say uh that's about what i thought that's what i thought so yesterday uh very early in the morning four o'clock in the morning does he live in the states i'm not i'm not quite sure but okay even even if it's four here like it's it's morning overseas like it's like nine o'clock so he wakes up and just has this thought so he he tweets out alex jones which for those who don't know alex jones just google him he does his own he's got a uh, internet show and a podcast and he says very ridiculous racist As very interesting opinions on frogs hate, hateful things also just ridiculous and some some funny i'll give him that but it's not funny like in the oh he's trying to be funny it's oh this guy is crazy funny you know yeah. like this guy yeah. has lost it um so thorin tweets out alex jones is a g and always has been if you're one of those people who thinks they have to say, yeah, but he got this wrong, so you can't just believe everything he says, then here's a new slash for you. That's how you should approach literally everyone. Sad we live in an age where people judge others on third-party descriptions they've heard of who they are and their actions. Media bias wasn't as bad in the past, generally, but it still existed. Do your own research and think for yourself or forever be a pup Like, look at... I I don't need somebody else telling me that Alex Jones is crazy. Mm -hmm. I can I can look up I can I can look at videos like said, and tell literally, you literally if you don't know in who an he instant, is this dude I would love, is crazy. If, if a listener doesn't know who Alex Jones is, I would love for you to do some homework. Google him, watch ten minutes worth of his material, and you come back to us. Go in our Discord or hit us up on Twitter at the center ring and say yeah, I had no idea who this guy was, and he's pretty nuts, right? Because I don't think it's going to take media bias for me to know that he's crazy. A dude who's claiming water is making the frogs gay, or Hillary Clinton is the lizard king, or Michelle Obama is a man, doesn't take a genius to figure out this guy's got some screws loose. And he's <laughs> recently been in the news because Facebook kicked him off their website uh vimeo also kicked him off all these websites are now kicking his product off their website just basically saying look dude we don't want you here you support white supremacists uh you support hate speech and we don't want it and so that's i think kind of what kick-started all this i don't care about politics i don't want to get involved with is he right should you listen to him uh, to be honest i don't really care if you want to listen to him go for it that's that's completely your freedom my point is on this when there are other big brands dropping this guy right and you know there's a public stigma against it if you are thorin who is already struggling to find employment because of the things you have said or actions you have done why why this like why did he feel the need to to bring this up and then you have guys like decay who are running to his defense saying like well, if you don't like it, unfollow it. Just unfollow him on Twitter. It's simple as that. And and that that triggers me, right? Because it's like these guys, like Thorne made that post and literally said not an, uh, not another word about it on Twitter. Uh, Decay will say something and, and just strike back at somebody and instantly kill a conversation without any dialogue. These guys don't want dialogue. They just want to be shock jocks. That that's what it that's what it is. They're, they're the they wanna, they... Thorne is is quickly turning. I mean, I always thought he was right, but he's really turning into the Skip Bayless of esports, mm -hmm. where yeah, and the only people who are listening to him and are paying attention to him are the people who 
just want to see the show. You know, they're yeah. just they're just they, here to see the show. Yeah, they they just like to see the world burn. And you know, and there are other people that are more outspoken and and active on Twitter. I actually uh, saw on on uh, today Richard Lewis was like, you know what, I'm going to um, unban. Um, I saw that uh, all all the people on Twitter, you know, I that that I've banned in the past for being toxic. Um, but you know, say what you will about Richard Lewis. I mean, he he does react to just things maybe he shouldn't just react to because you know he's arguing with people that have like two followers on Twitter. But I mean, he has dialogue. At least there's dialogue. It, yeah. it may be yeah. one sided yeah. at times, but, but he's willing to do it. But he's willing to he's willing to discuss it with people and have dialogue. People like Thorin and Decay, they want nothing to do with that. I don't know if it's whether or not they just feel like maybe scared that they're going to look stupid, right? Well, and, and that their arguments is, are just going like, to be destroyed. But the answer isn't just simply unfollow, right? Like yeah, well, you got to look at the bigger picture here. The bigger picture is there are people who are wanting to get into esports, or you have people looking up to Thorin to be this talking head to be a figure in this scene for csgo or just esports in general right and yeah. people wanting to get involved and then it's like you pull stuff like this where and like you said it's it's not even so much the tweet right it's it's the after effects it's how all he said was like sad we live in an age where people judge others like and then decay is saying don't judge someone by what they say unless it's racist or whatever well thorin has said racist things before you know he has said very very insulting things about different people so what lie again this this and, falls into and constantly and constantly pokes at the brazilian scene i this, mean he said something racist about brazilians and then this constantly and then he falls, constantly pokes and we've we've said it before is this little boys club that that entire crew runs with you know yeah Oh, I mean, just, it's not a big deal what he says, just as long as it's not racist. Well, he has said racist stuff, Decay. Well, just unfollow him then. It's like, okay. Well, Decay, what about your friend Sadikis? Does He was drunk. People make mistakes. It's like, I, yeah. where where's the line then, dude? We, like, we, when are we finally going to hold people in these, these parts of esports accountable to say you represent something larger than your game now? You are not just yeah. representing Counter Strike just for your tournament, right? This could make yeah. or break a lot more than just your career at this at this point in esports. Yeah, and before I felt like these guys, these figureheads, could say something and no one stood up to them, but now there are people that are established in the scene standing up to these guys and saying, "Hey, like, what, what the hell? Why are you saying this?" You know, and and if and, you know, because other people see the uh, the forward motion, the the progress, the momentum that esports is gathering, and it's becoming big boy now. I mean, there's money being thrown around. There's big boy sponsors, you know, uh, coming into the scene. Not only you know sponsors tied to gaming products like Razer, Corsair, you know those type of guys, but there are outside entities outside of esports wanting to get into this scene, and those guys aren't going to deal with people outspoken people not even i don't want to say outspoken because you can be outspoken and be be you know uh, smart about it but you know they're not going to deal kindly with people seeing these kind of things without any repercussion right yeah like you can't get upset that you're not going to get employment you're not going to get jobs when you say things like this and then it's radio silence right then right. it's like okay i'm going to say this and now go followers you know, fight my battle for me. You know, it's like no, and that's what that's they do though. Fly. They light, they light the fire, and they they go away. And you know, and even Slasher was tweeting about it, just in general, right? He wasn't like calling out Thorn or anything, but he was saying just that. Uh, where was it? Those esports colleagues and game industry folk who defend or say nothing are imp implicit in statements that are making esports look foolish and unwelcoming. For esports and gaming to not be seen this way or worse as a bastion of racism sexism homophobia is to speak and act loudly i never thought i would say this but i agree with slasher for once for the first <laughs> time ever i don't think he made himself look like a fool and i 100 percent agree you know you cannot 
And, 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 you know, sure. Is it a big deal? No, it's not a big deal. But it's when you when you lump in a bunch of little deals together, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a way to say what Thorin said and not be so... Pff, you guys don't believe him? Well, it's just because you're idiots, right? Right? <laughs> Okay, you you you're gonna believe that media biased? Okay, sure, whatever. And it's like, or he could have just said, you know, it's crazy to see that in a world that preaches love and acceptance, we're ready to have Alex's Jones head on a on a pike, without ever hearing his side of the story away from his crowd, right? Away from his followers. No one really truly knows who Alex Jones is, so it's a shame that we want to run him out of his job. Okay. So what's wrong? Like that sounds completely different it's, from what Thorne said. It's it's the shock jock, and it, it's it's saying it in a way of being a shock jock and just speaking with conviction, right? Like conviction when you really don't need to speak with conviction. Mm-hmm. I mean, Decay does it all the time. It, it's it, it's a little annoying, but it's yeah. It why can't we just have normal? I guess my point is just normal dialogue. We don't yeah. have to say things like we're Martin Luther King on, you know, at the podium, just speaking to a giant crowd. Right. Right. Like well, giving this like big giant speech. Love, I mean, I even, I feel like the thing I just read from Slasher was a bit dramatic. It, it's <laughs> yeah. It's soapbox material. Like they're right. getting on their soapbox and just, you know, speaking to the world, like hear me hear, but it's like, no, can we just talk about you talk about like normal people? Absol- absolutely having a conversation? not. Absolutely yeah. not. That's not how you get your voice heard. Uh, Slasher did like retweet this though, uh, which I found a little interesting. Um, some dude on Twitter, I don't know who he is, but it's got 156 retweets and 785 likes. Uh, the E in esports stands for extremely racist, and he tweeted that you know after the morning I of Thorn tweeting that. So it's like, again, it's not like we're just making this up, you know? There are people viewing this and seeing it, and I get it, right? You have, look, you're also going to have that contingency of the outsiders not knowing what they're talking about. Look at at the NFL. Uh, All the kneeling controversy going on with the NFL. I mean, how many times do you hear people who don't watch football at all try to give their input on it and then it's kind of like yeah well that's not really correct though you know like oh yeah they're they're not kneeling because they hate the flag well no no that really has nothing to do with it you just just that one you are kind of listening to third parties and and forming your opinion around that um yeah so i completely yeah. understand that but again all that's starting because of talking heads misleading people i don't know I really don't know just, how to finish the topic up other than when when is it going to be enough to where everyone's kind of like, okay, like we're we're done here. I, I think it's starting to get to that point because there are people and you can look at their timelines. There, there are reputable people that are just saying, all right, why? Why? Why would you say that? Like mm. calling them out on on this stuff. And it's not there yet. I just I just want to see I love esports. I I I sacrifice a lot to watch it to because I love it and, and I want to see it grow. I want to see it be mainstream. I want to see it continue this momentum train that it's on right now. But it at this point we're about these a, people one a month of these, some like, oh, this guy said this yeah. racist thing right. or so these people aren't going to stop the progress, but they're going to slow it down. And I, I could live in a world without those individuals being in this, in this scene. We don't need that. Like we, yeah. we don't need it. Yeah. I, I, would I mean, if you're going to say stuff like that, you know, say it in a way that's not going like, to trigger people you know, and, and two have years dialogue. ago, you could make the argument like, well, but we really do need Thorin, right? Two years ago, the CSGO scene needed Thorn. Yeah. Not so much now. You know, not... You, you don't... You, you mentioned it's not going to stop progress. It might stop progress for one person, though, who was getting into it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he makes a joke about something or another, and then he's like, well, maybe this isn't the scene for me. 
And it's like, and even right yeah. there, if one person feels like they cannot be into esports because of what someone said, then it's like right there is a problem. Like if one person is one too many in my book. Um, and I'm no saint, right? Like I, <laughs> we know. I, I, I'm acknowledging that, but I also keep that stuff, you know, away from recording mics and Twitter. So. <laughs> yeah, and you're already saying it to people that are into games. Yeah, like if you're gonna say something stupid, be smart about it, right? <laughs> That's the moral of the story. Just yeah, be smart go. about what the stupid things you say, and uh, you'll never get caught. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say it don't type it exactly there you go let's get into some e-news though uh as we are wrapping up this show with zero production because again reminder uh my usb cable i think died for the mixer board or windows, something windows, of another windows, windows. Um, but i'm also willing to bet that as soon as we're done recording i'm going to restart my computer for the hundredth time and then all of a sudden it will magically work so I'm also fully expecting that to happen. Uh, it's a light week for e-news, really. Um, mainly just because I haven't had as much time to look for it. Um, today, two very, very, very big tournaments started. You have the CWL, the Call of Duty World League Champions, whatever the, whatever they call it. The CWL, though. Uh, that started today. So this is the final tournament for Call of Duty World War II. And then they're going to turn the chapter for the October, uh, yeah, it's like October 14th, I think. The October release for Black Ops 4. So, we'll see how that goes. I know a lot of people, a lot of pros didn't like World War II, so I'm kind of curious to see how they feel about Black Ops 4, considering from what I've gathered from the general public consent is, it's okay. You know, they, they, there's tweaks to do, but again, we all know the way Activision, the way they do call of duty games it's their beta is pretty much now this is the game <laughs> we're not gonna change yeah anything. yeah there's not much gonna change about it uh and the biggest tournament ti 2018 the group stage started today as well for dota um we'll talk about all that when it gets a little bit more into the the tournament here yeah, um, and I, and we encourage the the listener to watch it, even if you don't like ooh, MOBAs. Yes, they put on yes. a show. I am a very very big supporter for the TI for multiple reasons, but also it's just a great show. Like it is just yeah. a esports at its best, really. The production, everything on it. Uh, every year I have Brett and Anuj watch it, and they it's about the only time they ever sit down to watch Dota. Yeah, but it's the only it's, time I will watch a MOBA. <laughs> it is, it is a, but it's yeah. just that's what the TI does, right? That's yeah. how I got into Dota. Is I was on Twitch, I saw the TI, and then I was like, ah, I'll watch it. There's a lot of people watching it, and then fell in love. So there's that. I'm trying to think of other stuff that I didn't write down. Armada? No, Mewtwo King ended up winning Smash Com. Is that right? Armada and Mewtwo King were in the finals. Fact one of us. one of them won the tournament. <laughs> Or Smash Con. <laughs> uh, I did watch that over the weekend, but I can't remember who won it. This is a, a live look. A at live 10. look at me looking, looking at the up internet. who won the tournament. It was a really good finals, <laughs> too. Mewtwo King, right? Okay. Yeah. Sure. No, well, hold on. This is the most oh. awkward ending to a show. That website was terrible. Well, now, because now I got to know. Yeah. <sighs> but this sucks. Right here. Armada. Armada ended up beating Mewtwo King. Thank you. Mewtwo Sorry. King restart the... They did restart the bracket. That's why I was confused. Mewtwo King restarted the bracket. Armada ended up winning. End of story. A lot you of suspense. you have anything else? Nope. I have nothing. <laughs> Good. Can't wait to watch some Overwatch and be sleep deprived. This show is done. I thank you all for listening. Episode 118 of The Center Ring is in the books, a.k.a. your favorite esports podcast. Kind of awkward with no outro music, but that's the world we live in for this episode as I have one week to try and frantically fix whatever it is that broke. Uh, hopefully yeah. I don't have to do anything and it just fixes itself. We will be back next week. I think Anuj will be back. I don't really know when his vacation ends. Uh, follow us, follow on, Twitter. us on Twitter. Yep. Yeah. At the center ring, our website, tcr.gg. You can hit us up there. Oh, um, I should have brought this up at the start, but again the the start of the show was throwing me off 
we are doing a pick'em bracket for the CSGO major. So we'll get the link out there um, and we'll get things situated to where everyone can pick it. The winner of our challenge will get something. The prize is to be decided, but there is going to be one. So make sure you sign up there. It's free and you'll win something. What more can you ask for? But again, for 118, that is going to do it for the center ring. Thank you, guys. Thank you again, guys and girls, for listening. Uh, we'll see you next week. Music. Elevator music. I love it. All right. For real. Bye.